Okay, so first step is to stay calm. Go ahead and get someone to put pressure on whatever is bleeding on your on your patient, on your loved one, on your patient. If there's no one else with you, go ahead and put your knee and kneel down on that on that wound. It's gonna hurt them, but you gotta slow that bleeding somehow. But just get pressure on it one way or another. While you're getting that done, um, you gotta get pressure on there. Once you got that handled, go ahead and get your tourniquet. Open it all the way up. If you got plastic on it, rip open the plastic. Get your tourniquet just all the way open up. Velcro all open. Take the very end and the other very end, and we're gonna feed it through the very end of this buckle. The tip of this tail goes through this buckle and Velcro's on. Then you can put it wherever you need it. Um, we'll say it's in the arm, but it works the same for the leg. Get it up as high as you can go. Unclip this, and you'll have two hands to do this if you're doing it for somebody else or yourself with your leg. And just uh, cinch it down. And then once you think you've got it cinched down, cinch it down even more. I like to at least do kind of two cinchings on it. All right, we got that Velcro secure as far as we need to go. We get this rod here, we'll talk about that in a minute. And we're just gonna spin, that's one. We're gonna spin around again, two. At that point, check and see if you've got any bleeding. Check and feel for a pulse if you know how to do that. Um, and if it's still bleeding, go ahead and give it another spin. If, if it's still bleeding after that third spin, go ahead and go back a step and re-cinch this down tight, tight around that arm. And it's okay if the sleeve's in there. As long as it's like a small sleeve, not like a big fat jacket, but. Uh, okay, so you say so you spun it two or three times. Uh, that bleeding is stopped. Perfect. The windlass is gonna be retained in here. All we're gonna do is trap it with this little piece of Velcro here. And that's it. You can, you can calm down a little bit now because you've got, uh, you've got time at least on that particular wound. Um, just make sure it's still not bleeding. If it is bleeding, even though you know you applied this properly, you've done it three turns, maybe even a fourth turn after you've re-cinched it down and you still got bleeding, go ahead and put a second tourniquet on there. It's more common with legs, but you may need a second tourniquet on arms and try to put it above the first one if you can. So that's kind of the goal there. If you have a minute um, and a Sharpie, which you probably won't, uh, go ahead and write the time down. Um, do not remove the tourniquet, leave that on there for the surgeon to make that decision because he's got to go in there and fix whatever, whatever vessels were, were cut or shot or, or ripped open. So, um, leave it closed and always carry at least two tourniquets for the very reason I just said, you may need two. That's not even including if someone's gotten hit in multiple limbs. So go ahead and get this done. Start start addressing other life threats. a couple of different principles that we're going to talk about some key ones I think we'll go through um, we're going to look at some uh, two liter bottles and this is going to re represent a couple things if you'll notice on this first one I'm going to be squeezing kind of to simulate the heart um, like a heartbeat and this is the characteristic that a classic arterial cut shot bleed will be um, when you're bleeding from your artery, this is kind of how it will look like, whether or not you can see it or not, for, you know, for some internal injuries. Um, but also represented is the amount of fluid. If you look at these, these are two liter bottles, and that's about how much blood loss that you're gonna, your body's going to be able to um, allow for before you start getting really far into shock and kind of close to, to a irreversible shock, um, which like it sounds, uh, most of the time those don't end too well. The whole point is to keep this fluid in the body. Um, it's it's not easy to replace, it's not quick to replace, so uh, that's why we go over tourniquets, um, pressure control, all that kind of stuff. Um, so first when you approach anyone bleeding seriously, go ahead and put pressure on it, and that can be either a uh, knee, if you can kneel down on it, or if you've got, all you've got is a hand to use, put 
the heel of your hand on it and just push down hard. But I'm not going to say put all of your weight into it unless that person is unconscious. Because if they're conscious and you do that, they're going to squirm away and they're going to make your pressure ineffective. So put as much as you can. Tell them it's going to hurt, but put all the pressure that you can that they can actually physically tolerate before they start to squirm. Um, all right. Aside from that, um, as the two liter jug empties, um, kind of what we're going to be seeing at this point is a they're they're going their heart rate's going to be flying. Um, if you know how to take a pulse. Um, aside from that, they're going to, their skin's going to be cool. It's going to be very sweaty. They're going to look sick. They, they're going to be confused, uh, kind of progressing to, um, just dis totally disoriented all the way to a total loss of consciousness, depending on the, the person and that exact blood loss for them. But, um, those are kind of the signs that are going to be, you know, accompanying, uh, significant blood loss like we're seeing here um what's happening inside the body is that heart is pumping faster and pumping harder um your vessels are constricting in order to keep that pressure up even though there's not as much fluid in the body um uh, it's your body is compensating by by doing those things to still get oxygenated blood to your your essential organs so that's why the skin we see what we see on the skin as far as um you know, the sweating and all that, um, the profuse sweating, the coolness, it's not any longer an organ that's being, uh, really controlled by the body because it's kind of pulled that, uh, blood back into the body and shunted it. Um, and around here we should be looking at the venous bleed. Um, this is going to be more of a steady bleed. A lot of times you'll see the difference between arterial and venous bleeds being, um, you know, color of the blood, the venous is darker, arterial is bright red, um, one is spurting, um, but whereas the venous is not spurting. As we start to see this venous blood flow, um, just steady pressure is how it's going to look. It's going to be coming out steady, could look kind of like a mini fountain, but it's not going to be spurting with each heartbeat like we saw characteristic with the arterial bleed. So, it's going to be a constant, if you know, if you can see it, if it's external, there's going kind to of be a flow. If it's a, there are some circumstances where it will get some distance, um, but again, it's not going to be like spurting uh, like a arterial bleed will be. Um, I'm going to speed up the time on this, but it's going to, it does take a little bit longer for the venous simulator to uh, bleed out. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's not that much longer though. It was within about a minute to two minutes. Um, which, you know, that is realistic if, if a, uh, gunshot or, or something like that were to hit a major artery, um, that's actually a pretty realistic time, just a few minutes you might have. So, um, that's why it's so important to be prepared, know how to control bleeding, just get that, you know, that first step going pressure, direct pressure, give yourself a second to think, and then you can think of moving on to the next step. In this video, we're going to kind of focus just on tourniquets, but other videos will we'll add some things for chest injuries and head injuries specifically. Um, but this video is big on, you know, extremities, arms and legs are going to be tourniqueted if there's any doubt that it's a significant amount of blood loss. Don't let it get to this level of blood loss before you do anything because it could be too late. And if it's not too late, it's real close to being too late. So... Okay, so first thing you're going to do when you get your tourniquet is you are going to open it all the way up. Take all the plastic packaging, throw it away. You don't need it. Um, you can review, review the information if you want in the little uh, instructions that come with it, but otherwise you don't need the packaging. Don't leave it in there because it'll, uh, it'll screw you later on if you leave it packaged as is. I'm going to show you how to stage this so you can use it quickly and effectively and um, basically how to apply it as well, just real quick. But uh, just real quick first, this is the windlass. This is a, the rod that you tighten that applies the torque to the limb that you are trying to stop blood flow to. And that's why it's really important to get a name brand. This is a cat tourniquet. There are a bunch of knockoffs on um, online that you can get, but uh, make sure you get an authentic one. We got the windless retainer here. It looks like a, almost like an open bridge right here. But 
once we put that tension on this windlass, it's gonna sit inside of this retainer and it's got basically gonna, gonna catch that windlass so that it doesn't unwind from all the tension that's being uh, pushed against it. And then this here is the, just a, a retention strap that'll go over top. Once we have everything done and dressed and ready to go, we're gonna put that on last. So uh, just for reference, we got this buckle up here. Uh, we got this kind of back plate right here and I like to place it like this in the palm of my hand, my weak hand. And I'll let my strong hand kind of do the rest of the work, but just leave it like this in your hand, the buckle on top, um, this plate on bottom. And all we're gonna do is make three folds. So the first one just gonna come off the bottom right here, start right there. And we're gonna just gonna roll it all the way up to the top like that and kind of make it even-ish with that top, top buckle. Right about there is where I did mine, pretty close. And then come back down, and that's our first fold of three. So come back down to the same spot we went on the first one. Then on the second one here, same. We're gonna come up to that same spot that we picked out on the buckle. And then on our last one, we're gonna do the same exact thing, and we're gonna be left with this little bit of a tail right here. And all we do with this tail is feed it through this buckle like that, and then that just comes around and basically locks everything into place and retains it with that Velcro securement right there. So that's how I like to stage them. Um, staging it like this has come in handy for applying it to other patients throughout my career. And I've also self-applied one that saved my own life. Um, and this is how I had it staged. So I highly recommend staging it like this. It's almost ready to go um, it is ready to go all you got to do is um, pop this loose and then the rest just kind of opens up and you can put it on whatever limb you need to um, and then secure it on and now the absolute least important part of this video my qualifications and credentials I don't think these really matter for this but I'm told they do so I'll go ahead and cover them real quick so I was a professional firefighter for well over a decade, half of that time I spent as an EMT, half of that time I spent as a paramedic. I got to place hundreds of tourniquets in practice and training. I've placed a small handful on real life actual patients in the field, and I self-applied my own tourniquet once to save my own life. I was a CPR first aid instructor, a stop the bleed instructor, as well as a lead instructor at the fire department um, where I got to train recruits and I also got to uh, help with field training for firefighters that were, that were already in the field. I've taken classes like TECC and TCCC, which are just tactical care classes. One is just for kind of civilian based and the other one is more combat based, but either one, both are awesome classes. I'm also an author and have a brand new book out called Rules for Thee. It's available on Amazon. I'll link it below but you can also just go to Amazon and search for rules for the, and that's T-H-E-E, -E, and it should be the first thing that pops up. And it's gonna be both uh, ebook format, so Kindle, as well as a paperback format. So you can pick that up too. The book is geared towards a modern protector mindset and heavily based in our innate right to self-preservation. And it has no apologies about that. So check out the book. The subtitle is a little bit sassy for this video because I want this video to go as, you know, as far and wide as it can go. So aside from the tourniquet information in this video, the other important aspect of this is that you have a tourniquet. So use the information I am giving you or other people have given you, but use that information, but also buy tourniquets. Get at least two tourniquets. I'm going to link them below. I'm going to link to my favorite life-saving tourniquets that have actually saved lives and my own life. So I'll link those below for you. Aside from that, I also have a apparel line that is available. I'm going to put the link down below. It's called the Rules for the Collection. It's some pretty funny stuff. Check it out. Aside from that, thanks for giving me the chance to entertain at least and hopefully educate some. Please share the video with people that you don't want to bleed out and die. Thanks.